Good morning. Good stand with us as we worship. We're just going to celebrate and we're going to just praise our amazing God this morning. Go ahead, stand with us. Shake, sing it out. The mountains shake before you, the demons run and flee. At the mention of your name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell for many who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. The great. Yeah. 
this morning, greet someone around you. been talking about prayer this entire month. That first song was about adoration. This song right here is about confession. Lord, I come and I confess bowing here I find my rest without you I fall apart you're the one Guide my heart, and Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you every hour. I need you, my one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God. Sin runs deep. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found, is where you are. Where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Oh, and where you are. Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Yes, sing it if you know it. And Lord, I need you. Oh, I need song to rise to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand I fall on you oh Jesus you're my hope and stay oh Lord I need you oh
You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. My one defense. You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Father, we need you this morning. We need you this morning to just come settle upon us. There may be people here this morning just singing that song and just crying out in their hearts. Lord, I need you. They may be hurting. Lord, we don't know what everyone in this room is going through, but you do. Maybe loss in the family, sickness. But you, you can meet that need. All they need to do is cry out to you. Say, Lord, I need you. Just sing that again. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. You're my one defense. You're my one defense. My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not barefooted. I don't know if I should be up here. This is nearing November, and November is shoebox uh, month, and uh, so it is time for us to think inside the box. And um, thank you. <laughs> That's my one joke. No, okay. um, there's a flyer that I hope you received this morning. It's a how to pack a box flyer, and in that flyer, um, our instructions and for the first time in a few years it has been revised so read carefully the instructions on how to pack the shoe box um, and remember that uh, we cannot put any liquid chocolate anything that will break um, no used or worn items and no war related items um, there's a label on the back, a boy-girl label, and if you're doing more than one box, and I hope you will, um, we have more of these, and those labels go on your box marked for the child that you've packed for. Um, and, and $7 is encouraged to accompany your box to help pay for shipping. There are different types of boxes. This is our Go box. Go stands for gospel opportunity because with each box a child receives a, a gospel in their language that goes with their box. Um, regular shoe box works fine and you can cover it or you don't have to cover it. <laughs> I love these guys. Or a plastic shoe box, keeping it a, a standard size and not great big um, because we try to keep all the boxes similar in size. Um, we have the boxes out in the lobby as you go out. We have more of the uh, flyers. And our collection week is November 17th through 24th. And so bring in your boxes early so we can line them up across the stage. Last year we had 200. This year let's do 250 if that works for everybody. I think we can do it. And I'll close with the words that Jesus said in Matthew 18, 5, whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me.
Today, our world is being transformed by love. People are sending shoebox gifts filled with the good news of Jesus Christ. Fueled by the power of prayer, shoeboxes are traveling to the ends of the earth, bringing joy through a simple gift to over 100 million precious children. Shoebox gifts are shining a light into communities all around the world, bringing good news and great joy with Operation Christmas Child. I want the children of the world to know, I want their parents to know that God loves them, He hasn't turned His back on them, He cares for them, and He wants them to be with Him in heaven. That's what it's all about. These gifts bring joy not only to the hands that receive the shoeboxes, but also those hands that give. People all over the country are excited to pack shoebox gifts. When I look at these boxes, I just see thousands of smiling kids. It's an opportunity for the children to learn about Christ by just one simple gift. We're here at a processing center where volunteers have traveled from all over the country just to be a part of this special project. I think it's an awesome opportunity to change the world. Going to the ends of the earth, Shoeboxes are carried by any means necessary to that one special child waiting a world away. <laughs> Veronica and her siblings found themselves abandoned at an orphanage in Mexico after both of their parents were sent to prison. When I received my shoebox, God sent it for me. I could see how God, through Operation Christmas Child, He's not just changing my life, He's changing a lot of kids' lives. I remember three years ago when Veronica received her shoebox. Now she is a teacher in the greatest journey. It was never enough for us to go in, hand a child a shoebox, share the gospel with them, and then leave. We developed this curriculum, The Greatest Journey, a 12-week discipleship program for the kids that make decisions for Christ. After completing The Greatest Journey, children are blessed in a graduation ceremony where they receive a certificate and a Bible in their own language. The Greatest Journey is saying, Jesus loves you. You are a somebody. But I truly believe we are only seeing just the beginning of this project. Because the Lord, He's got something that is beyond our imagination, into the millions and into the billions. And these children will change the world. Every shoe box is important. You know, they're all different. There's no two shoe boxes alike, kind of like these snowflakes. No two snowflakes are alike. But every shoe box is important because when you pack that box and you fill it with your love for these kids around the world, and when you pray for the child who's going to get your box, God hears those prayers and God answers those prayers. You see, I want the children of the world to know that God loves them and He has not forgotten them. And I want to thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for being a part of Operation Christmas Child. God bless you and a Merry Christmas. Kind of puts things into perspective, huh? How humbling can a little shoebox be? Um, my name is Melissa Davis. Uh, good morning. I, I think it's a week coming up. Good morning. Are you there? Okay, I can't see you, but I think you're there. Uh, I am the pastor support coach, and uh, as you know, all month long, we've been celebrating Pastor Appreciation Month. Um, and I've visited with so many of you regarding ways that we can celebrate uh, Pastor Jamie and Pastor Steve, and uh, really showing our gifts of time and talents and love with them. And um, 
speaking of talents, I don't know if you were here last Sunday, but is Shane Leonard here? Did you see the video? How amazing. D d our, our FOFers are amazing. Um, there's gifts every day that I'm made aware of, and that's just one of them. And I'd like to thank him again for, for really praising our pastors in that way, and it's a fun, fun way to do things. Um, I, the responses have been amazing from you all, and I'd just like to thank each of you within FOF for, for really rising to the occasion and uh, really showing our pastors some love. Many of you have made some handmade goods um, and products and shared those with our pastors, and I know those have been appreciated. Uh, some have prepared meals, and who doesn't love a night to not cook? Uh, so I appreciate that as well. Um, others have unexpectedly happened upon some uh, good fortune when it comes uh, to financial, maybe some financial fortune, and they've shared that with our pastors, and I know that's appreciated as well. And even others have noticed very specific needs that our pastors have uh, and have prayerfully considered some things and risen to the occasion to meet those needs. And um, I just applaud each of you for what you've done uh, to make Pastor Appreciation Month this month so special. You know, the Bible says in Jeremiah 315, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. I believe that God has sent two people to do just that here at FOF. Would you agree? We are so blessed, y'all. Y'all. I've worked a y'all in there. We are so blessed. Um, and as this month draws to a close, I just want to personally and publicly thank both Jamie and Steve um, for really their dedication to the FOF mission. Uh, these guys continue to go above and beyond every single day uh, for the good of the FOF vision and for the good of each and every single one of you here. And um, and I, I've, I think you know this, but I, I certainly want to publicly uh, thank not only Pastor Jamie and Steve, but their families as well. Um, Y'all know this is not an eight to five job by any means. And um, that takes a special kind of wife in particular to be understanding of that and, uh, and children as well. And so I appreciate you, Amy and Jess, and the children as well um, for sharing your blessings with us as a church. Um, so at this time, I'd like to present uh, Jamie. I keep wanting to look over there and call you Steve. I'm sure your parents never did that, right? Um, I just want to present each of our pastors with, we're calling these baskets, if you will. I don't, you're, you can read yours. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to play guitar with that as well. Um, with some more goods as well that the congregation has. Um, it doesn't matter. They have the same. Name. I was going to say, I'm not sure if you can tell them apart. Yeah. They both they say Siffin. Where did you get the bag? I don't know. I might know someone that could sell you a good bag. I don't have um, any of these. I'd also like to remind each of our FOFers today um, that it is never, ever too late to show these guys up here your appreciation. Um, sometimes it's a thankless job, and, you know, I know that they pray for me when I need it or even when I don't know I need it yet. And um, I think sometimes we forget that because we feel the blessings that come from those prayers, but then we, we kind of go on about our day. And so I'd just la like to ask each of you to continue to show your support and appreciation throughout the year for this job. Um, and again, if you'd, if you'd still like to make contributions uh, for these guys, I will be around today. I'll be in the lobby afterwards. I will gladly accept uh, your contributions so that we can make uh, their lives a little more special on behalf of FOF. Um, but right now, I'd like to publicly thank them, and I'd like for you to join me in doing the same. And they're not huggers, so I had to hug for a little bit. Thank you all. And then I've been asked to do something today that I don't normally do, um, but I'd like for you to pray with me. And while we do this. Financial peace. We all want it. For a while, I didn't have it. 20 years ago, I hit rock bottom. I lost just about everything. I turned to God for help, and I learned how to handle money His way. As you can imagine, it worked. That's why I started Financial Peace University, because God's ways work. Whether you're in over your head or you're doing okay right now, if you bring home $10,000 or $10 million, if you're 21 or 61, we all need a plan. Millions of people have been through Financial Peace University. They have success stories of their own. They've learned how to get rid of debt, prepare for generations to come, and give like crazy. 
your success story, your financial peace is up to you. Now is your time. It's time to take control of your money. It's time to get ready for what God has for you. It's time for financial peace. I think we're going to be offering that soon. We didn't just randomly show a movie about money during the offering. It wasn't just on purpose. It was <laughs> we are going to be offering that class soon. Is Sherry here? You have a date for that? What was it? November 12th. Okay, so we need to sign up soon. <laughs> Okay. While you're standing, everybody can follow you and stand up with us. We're going to worship one more time. <laughs> uh, as uh, we thank God for our, for our blessings every day, and we hope that, uh, that we do that. But the first thing we need to, to, to thank him for is just for, for saving our lives, for coming into our lives, for making us a new person. Amen. can I give to you? What can I offer to a king for all the love you show? For all your mercy over me? I call your name you heard my cry out of the grave and into life. My heart is yours, my soul is free. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. Rock of salvation, my hope is built on nothing less. Morning by morning, oh, how great is your faithfulness! I call your name. You heard my cry out of the grave and into life. My heart is yours, my soul is free. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God. For saving me, you gave your life upon the cross. You suffered once for all, you made a way. Jesus said victory, you rose, you made us all your own, now we are saved. You gave your life upon the cross, you suffered once for all, you made a way. in victory you rose you made us all your own now we are saved thank you God for saving me thank you God for saving me thank you God for saving me for saving My soul is free. 
nothing else in our life we would thank you for that one moment father when you sent your son to take our place to pay our price to save us from a world of sin so we thank you for that this morning we thank you amen placement of that video is my fault uh, with the financial peak thing. I was the one who was actually supposed to talk about it. I was going to do it before the message. It, it didn't really translate to Steve and the rest. So um, if you have questions about that, basically financial peace is a program that we have done over the last few years many, many times. Um, I've gone through it. Um, uh, many people in the church have gone through it, and it's changed. A lot of it has changed the way that um, we view money. Uh, and view the way um, that we are that money is supposed to be used, and it's just a mentality shift in a lot of cases. Um, if you're interested, as Steve said, Sherry Piper will be at the back connection uh, table when you're finished, uh, or when service is over. You can ask them some questions, ask her some questions about it. If you need, you can ask me some questions. But there are many people in this in this room who have gone through that program and who have um, really uh, paid down insane amounts of debt uh, just with a few different uh, ways of, of doing things. So I'd encourage you to do that. Uh, she can give you all the specific details um, after this. Uh, there's, I, I want to extend my thanks for everything that's hap uh, you guys have done over this last month for this pastor or staff appreciation thing. I'm not particularly um, a good at people talking about me. Um, it, it it bothers me a bit because all I see is a. I see how I screw up a lot. That's <laughs> what I see. Um, but this year has been life changing uh, for our family. I feel like it's changed. We have changed a whole. We. Have, I don't know. And this church, it has been a church-changing year. Um, and and many of it, a lot of it has to do with the, some of you who have come in over this last year and have made this your church home, and you've, you've gotten involved and you've been supporting it throughout in many different ways. You have supported uh, me, you've supported Steve, the people who are in leadership, and that has been a huge blessing. Um, transitions are tough. And you never know how they're going to go. And I know some of you over this, uh, when the announcements were made in, in September of last year, and, and as we made transitions in October and the rest of the year, uh, there are some of you in this room who weren't sure if you really wanted to be here. Um, I, get, I understand that. Um, and what I want to do for you and for those of you who have come in since and for those of you who were on board from day one, I just want to thank you because the plan that God has for this church is not my plan. It does not rise and fall on me. It does not rise and fall on, on Steve and the celebration team. It doesn't even rise and fall on the people who are on the vision team or in those other leadership. It falls on all of us. And I want to thank you, first of all, for giving me the opportunity and for allowing God to, to work through it, and you guys watch it and see it on a regular basis of God walk, working through me and 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 changing a, a lot of different things. Um, I, working through the ministries of this church as we've gone through some transitions that some of them are were uh, you know needed and some of them maybe you know people may struggle with. I don't know, but I want to thank you. But I also want to encourage you to stick with us because for as great as this year has been, as as much as I feel like God has blessed and as as much as God is working in the lives of our people he is just getting started 
and and if you are here and you are present and you are part of this, um, I feel like that we should have like Congregation Appreciation Month, but then that would just be Steve and me, and we don't we can't do that. Um, I appreciate you all year round, but I just want to thank you for, for the kind words and cards and all those different things. Um, but also, I just want to thank you for being here and being part of of what God is doing and what God still wants to do. Um, as we've gone through this last uh, month, we've been talking about this concept of prayer, and we talk, we were dealing with this very um, simple acrostic that some of you have used, some of you have taught, I actually talked to somebody the other day who actually, when they had taught young people um, some basic discipleship stuff, they had used this ACTS um, acrostic. Um, I've taught it to youth, class, youth groups and, and other people uh, throughout the time uh, throughout my time as a, as a pastor and even before just because as an easy way to kind of get some ideas behind how to approach God and, and speak but I'll tell you over this last month um, as we've prepared these sermons as we've discussed and as I've had conversations with others of you um, it has been a, it has a really again uh, changed and formulated and, and kind of molded my own ideas about prayer. And I hope that's what it has done for you. Uh, even if you haven't taken part in the challenges every week, um, even if I haven't necessarily heard back from you or, or you've been watching on, on video or online instead of being here, whatever, I pray and I hope that, that it has changed your way of thinking about approaching your Creator in conversation and discussion throughout your day. And, and so this week, you know, we talked about adoration, we talked about confession and thanksgiving, and I, I love what the worship team did this morning with doing elements of each of those to kind of lead us into this idea of what the S is, this idea of, of supplication. Um, and I want to show you, a, a, I want to start, and this is kind of a, a, a different for me, um, but it, it's okay. I'm kind of a different person. I want to start with uh, reading some scriptures that kind of show how all of these things link together. So we're going to look in Psalm, uh, Psalm 66, just, just four verses. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he did for me. For I cried out to you for help, praising him as I spoke. If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, my Lord would not have listened. But God did listen. He paid attention to my prayer. Praise God who did not ignore my prayer and did not withdraw his unfailing love from me. And I, as I was reading this passage this week, it was amazing to me that every element that we have discussed over this month is in this one little section. That he talks about, the, the, the psalmist talks about the fact that as they're crying out and asking God for, for help in whatever the situation was, that they were simultaneously also praising God also adoring God in the presence, but also that they, this person, whoever wrote the psalm, realizes that also that the confession element was important. And had they not made those confessions, that their heart and their mind would not be in tune with God. And, and God would not, would, would not hear the, the prayer the same way because there would be that barrier to relationship. And I was just I just, I, it was just a blessing to me this week to look at Psalm 66 and everything we've discussed kind of, kind of encapsulated in those four verses. Psalm 66, um, just four verses. But and when we, this week we're talking about supplication. We're talking about this, and we talked, we've discussed a little bit, this idea of asking. And, and I struggle a little bit with this idea of asking um, on a lot of different a lot of different fronts. I have a problem asking in general for myself um, because I was always told growing up that you don't ask for stuff, right? Anybody else fallen? I mean, as you're, when you're a parent, you go to the store and the parents say, don't ask for anything, right? You go, you do, you go to someone's house and visit, and we had an interesting, we had a young guy come to our house for the first time uh, this weekend, and, and as we were leaving, he uh, he asked James to give him something to take home, and I had to tell him that at our house, you don't get stuff just because you ask for it. 
That it, and, and we were taught, and I was taught, that it's rude to go to someone's house and go, hey, I like that toy. Could you give it to me? We were taught in a lot of ways not to ask. And so I struggle, even though in my entire life growing up, I was told God cares. I was told, I was given the scriptures, you know, cast your cares on God because he cares for you. I was told, you know, if you ask these things in my name, I will give them to to you. I've, I've listened to those I've read those passages and been told the passage where, where Jesus is actually talking to his disciples and saying, ask, seek, knock, and it will be given unto you. And even though I know all of those things, even though I have taught those things, for me, I struggle asking God for stuff, particularly if it's for me. I don't have a problem going to God and asking for you guys. If someone comes to me and says, I've got this problem or this problem, I, I don't have a problem just praying immediately and going to do that it doesn't problem but there's an element of this that in my life when it comes to asking for things uh, I have a little bit of trepidation because there's this idea that it's uh, that somehow it is selfish even though even if it's uh, the heart cry, my heart cry it's hard to do that and so I struggle with that a little bit and I, I have a problem with with persevering if there are things that I feel like are are really good and and and, and I should pray for even if I've kind of gotten down and I've gotten beyond all my other baggage that I have, I, I ask for it and ask for it and ask for it. And then, you know, if I do it, you know, three or four or five times, then I, I kind of quit. I, 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 don't, I don't persevere in that element. I don't, I don't do uh, what, the, what Jesus illustrated in that one, um, one, uh, parable about the the person who came back over the woman who came over and over and over again to this person who could help her and finally the guy just answered her her uh, request just to shut her up I don't think I've ever gotten to the point where God was so irritated with me that he was like just for the sake of shutting Jamie up I will answer this prayer and I struggle with that a little bit. And, I, and I, there are other parts. I, I've struggled with disappointment because there, there have been things in the past that maybe I've prayed for and maybe I didn't, they didn't get answered the way I like. Um, I have fear of, of, of approaching God with these requests partly because of I don't want to be, je- I'm, I'm, not, I'm afraid that I'm being um, self-serving, but also at the same time, what if it, what if it, doesn't, you know, it doesn't get answered a certain way or, or whatever? And so there's, there's fear involved. And I know all those scriptures. Those are, those are, you know, Discipleship 101 scriptures. But I struggle with it. And I think we all, if we admit, if we get down to it, we have struggles. And it's all because there are always multiple voices in our head when it comes to this idea of supplication. When it comes to this idea of asking God for things. Because there are... Those of us who have sat in here, we've sat under preachers. We've sat, we've watched them, and we've heard this um, this uh, theology that's out, that's very popular. That basically, it doesn't matter if you're a Christian. Anything you ask for, God's just going to give it. He's like a he's like Amazon.com, except everything's free. And so we hear that voice of you know just do it if if you ask God to do it, and if you're in and if everything's right with you, then God will give it to you. And it doesn't matter what it is. If you want to be a millionaire, have faith and ask God for it. And if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. So definitely, you need to pay, plan to pay taxes on a million dollars next year. And so we have that voice. That's one of the voices that we hear. And we have family members who maybe it's don't ask God, or maybe they've said, you know, I prayed for in my life for things and it didn't happen. And I remind it reminds me of another obscure movie uh, reference from the '80s um, that some of you won't get and others of you will. But I remember in the movie Goonies, they were at, they were at the wi- they were at the wishing well and they had all those quarters and they were taking the quarters and they were putting them in their pockets and and uh, the kids were saying we shouldn't take these; these are other people's wishes. And Corey Feldman gets down and he gets a quarter and he goes, but this one was mine and it didn't come true. And he stuck in his pocket and he left. And sometimes when it comes, when we talk to other people about asking God for things, or we deal with our own lives, our own issues, and, 
and we have developed such a cynical attitude of, well, I asked for that one thing, and God didn't give it to me, so therefore, forget the rest of it. And, I'm, and, and so we have family background that deals with it, and we have the, the Bible qu- uh, quotes that we hear that we're given because we're, we, we have maybe struggled in the past because we have we've prayed for things. And we've looked at those scriptures from that, that Jesus, uh, of G, the Jesus uh, statements, and we looked at some of the ones from, from other parts of Scripture where it's, if you have the faith, ask it in my name and it will be given to you. And you did that, and you believe that we, we believe that we had the faith, and we look at our lives and there was nothing, there was, there was no unconfessed sin, and there was nothing, but it still just didn't happen. And so therefore, we struggle, we fear what it's going to look like because of all of these voices that drown out the reality and drown out God's voice saying, come to me. Bring your cares to me. And I don't know, I don't know what your issue is. I don't know what your opinion is today or what your experience, experience is. Some of you in here, if I were to ask you, you could tell me of specific things for which you have prayed that have miraculously been answered. I can, I can tell you of times in my life where I actually broke through all of the other garbage, all the other voices and all my other issues with self and prayed and, and God came back to me and said, this will happen and it happened. I, I've, I've seen that. And I know there are some people who are just it seems like that they have such a connection with God that when they pray, miraculous things happen. And so there are some of you who are good with that. You're just like, Jamie, you're talking about asking this morning. I have no problem asking because God answers my prayers. But others of you um, are skeptical because of the things I've discussed before. Or, or maybe you've been disappointed by God. Maybe... Maybe you've never asked God before because maybe it's your first time coming to church. You don't really know a lot about Jesus and, and, the, and, and the, uh, what it means to even have a relationship with him or whatever. And so when I'm talking about asking God for things, you're still saying, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I believe God's even there or if God's actually listening because in my experience or in my education or whatever, there's so much that I am about which I'm not sure. So many places where I struggle. And so I don't know, I don't know where you are this morning, but we all have an opinion. We all have in our experiences. And I, what I want to do is hopefully as we're just going through this this morning, we will discuss it and we will be able to break through some of those barriers when it comes to understanding what it means to approach God with our requests. Now, the word supplication, we did ACTS, and it's, you know, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And supplication is like the one word we don't really use very often. You can, you know what thanks, asking, saying thanks is, you know what confessing is, you know what to adore someone is, but this idea of supplication is a little bit different. And, and when you look at it, um, there's the idea of asking, which we've discussed quite a bit, but when you when you really go in, if you were if you were to Google it right now, if you were to look at something, this idea of supplication is not just asking, but there's also this element, or can be this element of begging, of actually you know just pouring your guts out repeatedly, no no uh, no pride involved, just humbling yourself, earnestly, earnestly bringing your cares and your concerns to God. And so that, that in itself should change a little bit of the way that we approach the ask when we, when we are talking about the book of Acts, or when we're, we're talking about this Acts thing, but when we're talking about prayer, talking about the ask and setting it up. And I want to look at, at, at Psalm 142 just because it actually um, really um, kind of helped me frame this myself this week. A Psalm of David regarding his experience in the cave of prayer. I cry out to the Lord, I plead for the Lord's mercy. I pour out my complaints before him and tell him all my troubles. For I am overwhelmed, and you alone know the way I should turn. Wherever I go, my enemies have set traps for me. I look for someone to come and help me, but no one gives me a passing thought. No one will help me. No one cares a bit what happens to me. Then I pray to you, Lord, 
I say, you are my life, you're my place of refuge, you are all I really want in life. Hear my cry, for I'm very low. Rescue me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison so I can thank you. The godly will crowd around me, for you treat me kindly. I just, when I was reading 142 this week, I just, it hit me so much because of this idea of, of going to God and crying out. And, and when you talk about the story of the Psalm of David when he's in the, in the cave, you know, everybody else is around him. He's got a king after him wanting to kill him. And he says, I had no, no one gives me a passing thought, but I know you are there. I know you are listening. I will take my cries to you because I know you listen. And it does not fall on deaf ears. It is not, you are not powerless to help me. When we get started this morning, when we start thinking about this idea of supplication, I want you to get that into your head this morning. Regardless of all the other things you've, you've seen, regardless of all the other things you've heard, regardless of your own experience or the place where you feel like God just, when you were down, kicked you because he did not answer the prayer, I want you to know that the words of 142 are true. Regardless of where you are, if you're hiding from people trying to kill you, when you take your cries to God, he hears you. He hears you. But the struggle we have sometimes is, is what do we what do we ask? You know, sometimes you know. I remember when I and I may have, exp- have a, I don't think I've talked about this before. When I was a kid, for about ten years of my life, I prayed for the same thing every night: a dirt bike. Every night, actually, let's be honest. I'd still pray for the dirt bike, but I prayed. Every night for it. And maybe that's the reason I have such a hard time because I never got the dirt bike. No, that's not really it. But sometimes, what, but what I realized as I got later is that the, well, what my mom told me later was that every night I prayed for the dirt bike, she prayed I would never get one. So <laughs> that's, that's the other, other part of that. Apparently she was closer to Jesus than I was. Um, but when we... We ask, you know, what what do we ask for, right? Because we, we know if you ask it in my name, it's there. You know, we, we, we've been told that. We know that there are multiple places where it talks about taking your concerns and taking things to Christ. And so, you know, what is the thing that for which we should ask? How should we ask God for these things? And, and you know, I, um, I want to try to cut through these voices and I want to look at uh, something that sometimes we miss when it comes to prayer. Um, sometimes we miss because, honestly, many of the things for which we are asking are extremely selfish. And so I want to I want to go back. I want to go to First um, John five, and I just want to read um, these verses. I write this to you who believe in the Son of God, so you may know you have eternal life, and we can be confident that He will listen to us whenever we ask Him for anything. In line with his will. We can be sure that he will give us what we ask, and if we know he is listening, we will, when we make our request, we can be sure that he will give us what we ask for. Can you take it back to 14, please, Chris? Just leave it up there for a long while. We, what I've discovered in my life was that at some point, um, when I was reading, I realized that apparently, it was not God's will for me to have a dirt bike. Pro- probably because he saw how dangerous I was on a bicycle and knew that I would probably be dead if I had got, actually had a dirt bike. I don't know. That's just me speculating over as a 39-year-old. But here's the thing that I think that we need to realize when it comes to what do we ask for. Now, it doesn't, I, don't, I believe we can ask for anything. We can ask, if we're going through financial struggles, we can, we can ask God. We can take those to God. If we are going through physical issues, we can ask God. If we are spiritually struggling, we can ask God. If we see people going down the wrong path, we can pray for those things. I mean, I, that's, that, is, that 
is not what I'm saying here. I believe it wholeheartedly. But one of the things I feel like that we have done, and one of the reasons I think it's so important to think about this whole process of prayer, is that if we go through these other ideas of reminding ourselves who God is through adoration, if we go through this idea of, or through the process of confessing, and, and either confessing our sin or just confessing our faith in Christ, when we go through this, this attitude and develop this attitude of thanksgiving, it kind of puts us in a position that when we are to the place that we are going to ask God for something, we are going to be in line with His will. And we don't usually go through that process. I don't usually go through that process. I rarely go through that process. What I think of, and even, even if you think about the prayer request you give so often, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to just, when we request prayer for people who are sick, okay, there are some of them we're extremely concerned for them. But let's, let's be honest. When we're talking about family members who are extremely ill, when, we are, when, they're, when they're facing eternity, and we start make, having those prayers for them, part of it is because we, don't, we want them to get better. And then a bigger part of it, in so many ways, is that we don't know what we will do if we lose them. So much of the request falls on how it will affect us. And so if you are going... And because of that, because we are so focused on ourselves in that situation, the problem is sometimes we are asking God for things that are clearly against His will. We pray for people to get better, but we never ask God if it's His will for them to get better. And I realize there are places in Scripture where it says, if someone's sick, bring them to the, to the group. And they'll pray for him. And, and I know that. Okay? But even in that, sometimes I, I believe, and I know just from my own life, that the requests themselves are so selfish um, that we just, we miss it. We miss that it's not God's will. Sorry, I just... Um, and so we have, to meet, we have to be clear. We have to understand. We have to know and ask ourselves, when we are asking for these things, are they really the will of God? And the only thing that happens is that comes through searching. It comes through, through connection with God. It comes through just knowing God in a relationship. And that doesn't mean that, that if you do all this stuff, you'll never ask God for something that's out of His will again. I'm just saying, I believe, I truly, in my own life, and maybe in yours, many times the things for which we are asking are selfish. When we start talking about people who are preaching the idea of prosperity, that everybody's meant, everybody's meant to, to be rich, and everybody's meant to be healthy. And you look at that connected to the scriptures. That is not in line with the will of God. At least it wasn't in line for the will of God for Paul, who struggled with his entire. He said very clearly in his thing that he struggled with something repeatedly and asked God repeatedly for it to be removed for him. And it never happened. It was apparently not God's will for Jesus to be loaded. Because he talked about the fact that he didn't even really have a place to lay his head. He talked about the fact that if you were going to follow him, you had to pick up a cross. And crosses are cheap. It takes a couple pieces of wood to nail them together. That is not an idea that everything's going to be great. And if you ask God for all this great stuff, it's going to automatically happen. So I, I, I encourage you, we can ask God for anything. But we also have to be come into contact and come, into, come to terms with the fact that sometimes the thing for which we want, the thing for which we pray the hardest, is not the thing that, for, that is best for us on some level. And I don't know that, 
Some of those questions are, are going to, uh, I can't answer. I can't answer so many things as to why certain things happen, why certain answers, but, but I know someone who can. If we are relating to God, if we're relating to God, if we are, are growing closer to Him, He can give us insight. He can give us the grace to know why things are happening the way they're happening. So, you know, what's asked for is a tough thing. And it says we can ask for anything. But also in 1 John, we have to realize what the will of God is and how that works. Um, when should, there's the other question of when we should ask for these things. What, when, when, do we need to, when do we ask God for stuff? You know, some of it, my struggle and some of your struggles uh, um, may be that the fact that you wait you, you, something comes up and you don't want to ask about it and you don't want to request prayer for it, you don't want to do anything like that because it, you don't want to bother anybody. You don't want to be a, a problem for anybody. And, and one of the things I want to encourage you is that even, you know, even if you, are, you have a need show up and you need to start praying for it immediately, pray for it immediately. He asked people immediately. I've, there are people um, who go in and out of the hospital on a regular basis, and I don't even know it because they don't want to bother anybody with their struggles or with their, with, their, with their medical issues. That's not a bother. And whether or not it is, it is God's will um, for the, that healing to come or whatever, it doesn't hurt to pray. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt us to be wrong. And so when needs come up, I encourage you, Pray. Also, bring them to other people. Yeah. Take them to others and, and, and listen and, and, and pray for each other and lift each other up. It's fine. And, and then keep asking. You know, in that Matthew 7, uh, you know, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you shall find, all those types of things. It doesn't just say ask once. It says keep asking, right? Keep asking. Don't just do it one time. Just ask, ask, ask. Ask. And, and so I encourage you, when, when do you start asking? Start asking immediately and keep asking. Keep, just keep moving with it. Keep, keep bringing it before God. Get to the point where, he's just driving, where you're driving God crazy with those prayers. I realize you're not going to drive God crazy. But there are people in, our, in the world that if we want something, there are times in our lives where we want something and if we're talking to a human being, we will go to them repeatedly. We will remind them repeatedly, this needs done. Can you help me with this? You know, whatever. And, and eventually it, gets, it happens, right? And so it's, it's important. Ask. Ask immediately. Ask and keep asking. Um, so... If you're asking, or you're doing that, and then you got you got have this question of what do you do in the meantime, right? You you know what you're for what you're asking. You're applying your life to, or you're applying the relationship to God. You're trying very hard to um, to line your make sure that your desires are in line with the will of God. You have been asking repeatedly. You are are just putting it out there constantly. Um, and you say, well, what do you do in the meantime? But that was that's the next one. I want to ask, this idea of how you should ask, it comes up too. Um, how you should ask. Come to me, right? Uh, you're going to the Father, you're going to, and, and I, when I was thinking about how you should ask, um, I was thinking of two specific people in the Old Testament. Um, because it's always been weird to me looking at these two stories. Moses had a time when he was up on the mountain and he was receiving the law of God. And while he's receiving the law of God, God tells him, oh, by the way, while I'm giving you all this really inf important information, the people of Israel are down there worshiping a calf. Um, it, you've been gone for 40 days and apparently that's enough time for them to decide that they should not follow me. And and Moses said, or, or God says to Moses, you know what? I've got a great idea. 
I'm just going to destroy them all, and we'll start with another. We'll, we'll start my plan some other way. And God and, and Moses' response to that is to say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. And he starts reminding God of who the Israelites are. He starts imploring God, don't, don't turn your back on them. He starts saying, I'll go down, I'll take care of them. And, and he, he confronts God and says, don't do that, hold on. Now the funny part, is, and, and God, says, God relents. God says, okay. And when the funny thing for me is when Moses gets down there and he sees what's going on, then he loses his mind and starts breaking stuff and, and things. But, but the, the interesting thing with Moses is that he had no fear. There was no trepidation about confronting God on something about which he was passionate. And when I look at Abraham, that's the other, that's the other story in Scripture that has always just kind of, kind of really been weird for me. And I, I've never even... I never really understood this idea that when God tells Abraham he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, that Abraham starts dealing with God. Why would you destroy an entire city if there are people there who still love you? And he goes through the whole process. He starts at 50 and he goes down. But, but Abraham was not concerned about approaching God and, and actually having this kind of conversation with God, that praying and imploring God to change his mind and imploring God to, to, to withhold his hand of judgment. Now, I realize there are multiple people who have different ideas theologically about those two places. Did, did Moses um, you know, or, and Abraham really change God's mind? Or did God know and it was a, it was a step, it was a, an opportunity for Moses and Abraham to to demonstrate their um, you know their relationship with him, and that regardless of what they had said, that God was going to follow through with the plans or wasn't going to follow through with the plans. I realize all of that, but what I want to focus on is the fact that these two men walked so closely with God that He revealed to them something He was going to do or said He was going to do, and their response is to look into God's face, figuratively, and say, don't do that. Don't do that. How many of us in this room have the confidence that there, our relationship is like that with the Creator God? That we could, if we were to see the picture, see the plan for God, uh, that God had for your life or for your church or your community, that you saw what it was and you could say, God, don't do that. I just, that was convicting for me. It should be convicting for us. These two guys, and I know we hold Abraham and Moses up to a very high standard. We look at them, and, and they are even in, in New Testament and throughout the entire history of the Jewish people. Those two guys are, are held up to a high standard. They are the, the, the patriarchs and, the, and the, the lawgivers. And so we look at them and we give them, somehow, we, we, we put them on a pedestal. But they were both very imperfect men. They were both men who struggled with various things in their lives. And we just know the stuff that was recorded. But they still had a relationship with God. They still had the connection with God that when those things were happening, they had the confidence. And they had the confidence in their relationship that they could actually square off, so to speak. So Hebrews talks about going boldly to the throne. We can be bold when we approach God. We can be, have expectation when we are asking God for things. We can do that boldly. Even if we are trying to align it with the will of God, we can still go boldly to the throne of God. We can still give Him the, uh, the, our requests 
we can still be in supplication of asking, begging God to answer those requests. So what do we do in the meantime? That's the, that's the last question. You know, we have all this stuff. We, can, we know what to ask for and how to ask for it and when to ask for it. But what do you do in the meantime? Because there are people in this room who may have been praying for something for a very long time. Um, I've, I think I've shared before that my grandmother prayed for my grandfather's salvation for roughly 50 years before it happened. What do you do in the meantime when it looks like you, the prayer request may be, you may be in it for the long haul? Keep trusting God. Keep believing that He is who He says He is. And continue a life of obedience to God's will. Keep trusting God. If you, if you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ at some point in your life, if you're doing it today, and you, you place your trust in God, and you have the belief that He can answer those prayers, and you have the belief that He is listening, that your prayers are not lost on Him. If you are, if you really believe that and you continue, then, then the response for those two things is that you will continue to live a life of obedience. You'll continue to align yourself with what God has planned for you. You will, you will Continue to align yourself with, in a relationship with Him so that you grow closer and closer together. You know, sometimes you pray for things for years, and then when you, in retrospect, look back, and you can be very thankful that God never answered that prayer. There are a lot of people who have prayed for a very long time that they would marry X person, and it didn't happen. And when they look back, they see what it could have been. Keep trusting, keep believing, and keep obeying. I want, I've been doing some, we've been finishing with some quotes. Um, this week I'm, I'm going to use one that I think really sums up the entire month of prayer. Um, and it's actually from John Calvin. It, it says this. Our prayer must not be self-centered. It must arise not only because we feel our need as a burden we must lay upon God, but also because we are so bound up in love for our fellow men that we feel their need as acutely as our own. To make intercession for men is the most powerful, practical way in which we can express our love for them. Now, with all the other things I've said, and all the other elements, I, I want to encourage you to continue to pray for each other. Continue to focus on how God can answer others' prayers. You know, we can request things for ourselves and them still not be self-centered. But we need to realize that it is a, is a great gift that we have been given. Prayer in general is a great gift that God has given us. The opportunity that we have to have a dialogue with the creator of our universe and the saviors, the savior of our lives. We have the opportunity as we go through this and as we approach him to not only bring our concerns, not only to bring our confessions and our praise, but also to take, to lift our, our fellow men and women up in prayer for whatever they're going through. So this week we have a challenge. And it's the challenge is this. Spend the week asking. Some of you are like, that's easy. I can do this. I can ask. That's, that's easy. Spend the week asking and trying to figure out Trying to align your asks, your supplication with the will of God. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Um, 
screw you are. I I think you just. Thank you for speaking to us. I thank you for um, just the opportunity that we have to come to your throne. Um, I pray that the things that were said this morning are not, um, they're not misinterpreted. Lord, I, I know that you want to answer prayers. I know that as the psalmist said in 66 and 142, that you hear us. You do not you are not ignoring us. You are not deaf when it comes to what we have to say. And I pray right now, Lord, if there are people in this room who have something for which they need to act, that they will do it. If they want to come forward and pray at this, this kneeling bench here at the front, or they want to go into the corner where we actually have someone waiting to pray with them in the back, or whether they need to pray on this, where they are, or find somebody who they know who knows how to pray. I just pray that they will do that. One thing, Lord, that I know is your will is that people come to repentance, that people come into a relationship with you, that they don't have to kind of figure out that if they ask you to be come into their life, if they, if they confess their sins that you are faithful and just to forgive them and to cleanse them from unrighteousness that is that is always your will and lord if there's anybody here this morning who who needs to pray that kind of prayer who needs to ask you to come in and to be the the person in charge they will do that this morning and if they will do that and then they will share it with us so that we can celebrate with them and we can pray for them as they start this new life in you. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Um, I want anybody in the room who's been struggling to understand, to really know in your heart that there's no shame in feeling angry. At God. Um, there's no shame in feeling like to ask Him for something. I'm like Jamie. I always felt like I pray for other people. I work my butt off for God. But I didn't ask for a lot of things for myself, and I still don't. It's just not me. And I usually don't ask more than once because I feel like I'm nagging. <clears throat> um, that's probably something I learned from my mom. <laughs> um, but I remember at a time in my life where things were really, really, really tough. Thinking, you know, I've given so much of my life. Do you see me? Are you really the God who sees because if you see me and you hurt when I hurt, how can you see me and let this go on? Where are you now? Don't you know that I need you? And I knew that he was there. I know that. In my faith, in my, my learning, my head knowledge there and I felt in my heart he was there and I knew that he was putting people in my life that were helping me make it through but it was hard it was so hard and there were times when I felt like every semi truck that went by that I didn't drive in front of was a missed opportunity but I'm glad I hung on and I'm glad that I believed in a God who truly was seeing me and truly was working all things out for his best and for the best of everyone he loves. I'm going to sing a song now that I did not write, but I wrote so many things like it that I feel like I did. I journaled so much. I prayed so hard. The words that um, were written in this song. Yeah. 
How many times have you given me strength? How many times have you heard me cry out, God, please take this? How many times have you given me strength to just keep breathing? Oh, I need you, God, I need you So as we leave here today, just, just remember that. And call out to him. Asking for help is not a bad thing. And who better to ask for help from than the creator of the universe? Than the one who gives you strength. Trying something else a little bit weird this, this morning, but um, if you guys would stand with me, please. I want to close with Psalm 20. Because of everything else I've said this morning, this is, this is my prayer for you, and this is the mentality, the, the, what I want you to think as you leave. And this, is, this, is the, this is the 20th Psalm. If you've got your weekly reading, you'll read it this way. And it goes like this. In times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. May He send you help from His sanctuary and strengthen you from Jerusalem. May He remember all your gifts and look favorably on your burnt offerings. May He grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. Now I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. He will answer him from his holy heaven and rescue him by his great power. Some nations boast of their chariots and horses. We boast in the name of the Lord our God. Those nations will fall and collapse, but we will rise up and stand firm. Give victory to our King, O Lord. Answer our cry for help. Amen. Go in peace.